What's up everyone, this is Mr. King Liam, and today I'm bringing to you uh, a little bit of a random deck profile. Uh, this isn't going to be a meta deck profile or anything like that, but it's a, it's a deck profile that I've been in maybe interested to try out. Well, n not maybe, uh, that I am interested. Um, it is uh, an Exodia deck profile. Now normally Exodia of course is just basically get all the five pieces in your hand, but um, I've tried to... I've tried to uh, I've tried to add a couple of different options in, so you don't necessarily have to win with Exodia. So uh, let's take you through the deck. So obviously, first you've got obviously the five pieces of Exodia. The deck pretty much revolves around these five. Uh, I've also got three Exodia's Ultimate Forbidden Lord. Uh, this is uh, quite handy if you need to, if you need to recycle the graveyard, and also it um, works well with this next card as well in certain situations, which is. The newest Exodia card, the legendary Exodia Incarnate. Now, uh, this card, obviously, you bring this card you bring out using uh, one of the Exodia pieces. Uh, I believe it's the. Oh yeah, okay. You can tribute or you can uh, special summon them by tributing one of the five. This gains a thousand for each piece in the graveyard. Um, at the end of each turn, you can. Um, well, actually, at the end of each turn, it I think it automatically brings a piece back to your hand. Well, it does in Death Pro, at least. Um, it can't, can't be targeted by... Uh, so it's unaffected by other card effects. And also, if this card was if this card is destroyed by Bale and Sons of the Graveyard, you can reveal any number of Forbidden One monsters in your hand, and then for each, you draw one card. So let's say you had three. Obviously, you draw three cards. So it's a good draw engine as well, if you uh, need to get some useful cards. Um, obviously, next, probably, uh, arguably the, the biggest staple in an Exodia deck, I think, Royal Magical Library, I've obviously got three of these. But, unlike normal Exodia deck profiles, I'm actually running a slightly different build, because everyone, um, everyone that uses, uh, everyone that uses Exodia pretty much has, like, uh, Broken Bamboo Sword, or Golden Bamboo Sword. If I can spell golden right, there we go. So, yeah, there's golden bamboo sword. So basically, everyone, um, everyone uh, uses these. I can see why uh, they use these, but I want to try something a little bit different. Uh, so yeah, that's why. Um, well, I'll explain my choices in a minute. After that, we've got three. We actually got three spirit reapers. Uh, it's basically a stall card. Uh, obviously, can't be destroyed by battle, and. Uh, yeah, it's just basically just basically a little bit of a stall card. Uh, I've I've used this a couple of times in the doors, and it's come that's come quite useful. Then obviously we've got card card D. Uh, doesn't really need much explaining, just a draw card. Then uh, we've got Max C because special summoning, obviously. And then we've got two Battle Fader as a more defensive card. So for the spells, we've got one one day of peace. So obviously. Uh, each player draws one card, and then another player takes damage until the end of the opponent's next turn. That's quite a useful card, especially if you've got Legendary Exodi Incarnate, and there's no pieces in the graveyard, so that's quite useful for that. Upside Goblin, another draw engine. Uh, two Swords of Revenal Knight. Now, this is probably where some people are going to say, uh, how come I'm running this? Um, it's quite simple. Basically, it's another Stall card. Obviously, it's probably not as quick as the Bamboo Sword, but... Like I said, I'm trying something a little bit more, a little bit different, uh, a little bit un more unusual. So that's, uh, that's why I'm running two swords of revealing light. Uh, I have used these, and of course with Royal Magical Library. Oh, I forgot to mention its effect. Uh, magical Royal Magical Library uh, gets a spell counter every time a spell card is activated. And then when you have three spell counters, you can uh, remove those counters from this card and then draw one card. So it's a little bit of a draw engine. So. So yeah, have Swords of Revealing Light, and then you can just activate spell cards. Well, as long as they don't destroy Swords of Revealing Light, or Royal Magical Library. And then you've, I've thrown in two Magical Manic, because uh, sometimes in this deck you do have a little bit of a, uh, you do have a little bit of a dead hand, so... Uh, magical Manic, uh, obviously spell cards to help Royal Magical Library. And also, um, you can shuffle any number of cards from your hand into the deck, and then draw the same amount of cards. So, yeah, it's... Uh, it's, I found it quite useful quite a few times. Book of Moon. Um, surprisingly, out of all the practice tools, I haven't actually used this card. 
I don't know why, but for some reason I never end up drawing it. So, I don't know. But yeah, obviously Book of Moon, good staple to have. So, there's that. Tw uh, two Twin Twisters. Doesn't really leave much explained. Just got one card, so basically uh, most of the time it would probably be an Exodia piece. And then you can um, destroy up to two spells such traps on the field. So, yeah, it's a handy way to get them off. Get them off the field. Also, I'm running two Hand Destruction. Uh, basically, another recycling card. And then our last spell is another is another stall card, Swords of Concealing Light. Now this one is a little bit like Swords of Revealing Light, except it's Concealing Light. So basically what, what it does is, when this card resolves, almost as your opponent controls when this card is activated, I now change to the face down defense position, and also they cannot change their battle position. This doesn't last as long as Swords of Revealing Light, so uh, I might think about replacing it for a third. Uh, and for the traps, free threatening rule, doesn't really need much explaining, another stall card. Free reckless greed, another draw engine. Do have Aris, just in case I need to recycle anything. And then we've got the newest trap card. And of course, it's Exodia's main attack. I noticed they seem to be doing this a lot in New Gear lately. Uh, they've just announced recently that they're, that they're making a Chaos Scepter Blast spell. So yeah, they seem to be making traps and spells based on attacks of monsters. Oh yeah, a Neutron Blast, that was another one for Ultimate Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. But anyway, uh, going back to the video, so this is Obliterate. <laughs> I had to do a slight, uh, hang on, I can do it better. Exodia, Obliterate! That's a bit better. <laughs> right, that's my nostalgia voice gone for the day. Anyway, um, so yeah, this is a really good trap card. Uh, I've used this in every single door and it has helped me out a lot. So, uh, just in case some people are unfamiliar with this trap, um, basically, what this does is, you can target one monster on the field, and then you can send one Exodia monster or Exodia card from your deck to your hand. And that does include the legendary Exodia Incarnate. So you can send that to the graveyard, say, if you've got too many, uh, and you don't think you'll be needing them. And basically, when you do that, you can return that target to the hand. So basically, it's a repeat trap. It's a continuous one as well, so it stays on the field, obviously, so you can keep using it. If this also, I do like this next bit. If this next card, so if this card is sent from the spell and trap zone to the graveyard, you can target one forbidden monster or Exodia card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. You can only use one obliterate effect once per turn and only once per turn. But you can, of course, use it during your opponent's turn. So, say they get something out, you can use this. Bang, goodbye. <laughs> Especially if it's an exceed, that come really handy. And obviously, once destroyed, you can say get uh, one of the Exodia pieces back. So that's the main deck. Um, obviously, it's not going to be the most meta, but um, yeah, it's a it's a fun deck to use. Uh, and it's not the not usual Exodia type. But of course, um, since we are running a couple of different changes, that means the extra deck is a little bit different. So uh, referring to what I said earlier about these two working together. So basically, a combo that I used a couple of times was uh, bring out the legendary Exodia Incarnate and then uh, bring out Exodia as the ultimate Forbidden Lord and then go for a quick rank 10. So the rank 10s I'm using is Sky Palace Gandharidara. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, then you've also got number 81 Super Rail. So one of the longest names, I think. Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Super Dora. And that, uh, this is the main one I end up going for most of the time, Super super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Gustav Max. Mainly because of that burn damage of 2000 when you discard, when you detach one card. So yeah, this is definitely uh, this is definitely one of a couple games, this card. And uh, yeah, it's an interesting, it's a good card to use. Uh, I am running two, uh, two rank fours, just in the off chance we get two raw magical libraries on the field. The ones I'm using is number one, the one Silent on the Arc, uh, staple in almost any deck these days, and uh, also Digester Emerald because of that uh, target three monsters in the graveyard shuffle all. So it's another draw engine, and then you can target a non effect monster in the graveyard, especially some of that target. So say you use this, and then got a left leg of the forbidden one, and you had that, bang, straight away, legendary Exodia Incarnate. Uh, I'm running only. I'm running one rank three because uh, I haven't needed it, but I have had a couple spirit reapers in my hand, 
during tests. So I'm running one number number 17 Leviathan Dragon. This is an option. And then we're running three rank ones, uh, number 13, number 31, and of course number 39 Utopia Roots. So anyway, uh, that was that was the um, Exodia deck, I guess for yeah using the new support from Legendary Deck. So let's just let's let's say October 2016. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, obviously, obviously a couple of changes could be made. You could you could add uh, Golden Bamboo Sword or Broken Bamboo Sword. Obviously, um, there are a couple of other cards which you might be able to use. Ties of the Brethren uh, could be used in this deck. I uh, suppose Foolish Burial, obviously to get an Exodia card in the graveyard quickly, and uh, maybe a third Magical Mana, or maybe even some equip spells like United We Stand, and maybe another Maxi and level Battle Fader. But apart from that, I'm happy with this deck. Obviously, it won't be the most consistent, it won't won't be the most meta, but uh, I've enjoyed I've enjoyed uh, I've enjoyed testing this deck out. So anyway, uh, there was my Exodia deck profile for 2016. Uh, if you enjoyed this deck profile, then please make sure to check out my previous deck profiles, including um, a Spellbook Dump uh, Magician Girl deck profile that I did a couple weeks ago. And uh, briefly to check out uh, my other videos on my channel, and make sure you subscribe to know when my newest videos are coming out. I hope you've enjoyed, and this is Mr. King Liam, signing out.